What's next? It's big. It's broad. It's next on Sunday. With six sections and pullouts, including glossy color fashion magazine, Ilan. There's something in it for everyone. Next on Sunday, ask your vendor and buy it. Hello and welcome to Next News. Nigeria's Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on Tuesday arraigned the chairman of Taraba Civil Service Commission, Yuguda Kaigama, on a 37 count charge of fraud and forgery with the intent of extorting money from five local government chairmen. The anti-graft agency, Chief Legal Officer Sylvanas Tahir, who read the charges before Justice Mohammed Danjima, said the accused, along with one Danjima Takum, is now at large and conspired to obtain 17 million naira from six local government chairmen. The accused pleaded not guilty to the charges and the judge ordered that they be remanded in prison custody until the case adjourns in July 19th. Nigerian security forces have arrested nine gunmen suspected to be involved in last week's pipeline attack that forced Egypt to halt some oil production in the Niger Delta, according to a military report on Tuesday. The movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta, MEND, the country's most prominent rebel group, claimed responsibility for blowing up an oil pipeline at Nembe Creek in southern Nigeria's Bielsa State last Friday. Colonel Rabe Abubakar, spokesman for the Joint Military Task Force in the Niger Delta, said the suspects were arrested with 142 rounds of ammunition, two guns, and a speedboat. Following the ongoing nationwide strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, the Minister of Education, Sam Egu, on Tuesday, said that the federal government did not enter into any agreement with the union. Mr. Egu, who said this at a news conference in Abuja, claimed the federal government only constituted a committee to negotiate with the University Teachers Union to support a report on the negotiations. He said that the government was favorably disposed towards recommendations of the committee adding that the major problem related to the issue of salaries. He said that the union was demanding a 78 billion naira increase in salaries, though it had not been appropriated for in the current budget. According to a senior Kremlin source, Russia's oil and gas company Gazprom is expected to sign a joint venture agreement with Nigeria's state-run oil firm, NNPC, as part of the Russian president's visit to Nigeria on Wednesday. Details of the deal were not available, but Gazprom in February said it was close to sealing a $2.5 billion oil and gas exploration deal that would create a 50-50 joint venture with the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. Russian President Dmitry Medvedev travels to the Nigerian capital Abuja on Wednesday to meet with President Umaru Yaradua and promote Moscow's economic interests in Africa's most populous country. Zane Nigeria says it is building a $25 million state-of-the-art customer care center in Abuja. The chief operating officer of the company, Khaled Korshid, announced at a news conference on Tuesday in Lagos that the company would be employing 2,000 young graduates to work in the center before the year's end. He said that about 400,000 calls were received daily at Zane's customer center and that there was a need to recruit more staff to handle these calls. Dino Melaye, chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Information and National Orientation, on Tuesday resigned his position after a rowdy plenary session which lasted for almost an hour. Mr. Melaye had accused the chief whip, Emeka Ihe Dioha, of high-handedness, arrogance, and non-performance. The House had just resumed after being on recess since June 4th when the chief whip, Emeka Ihe Dioha, raised an order of privilege claiming that some members had disparaged the House in the media. Mr. Melaye, who later apologized to the House for the embarrassment his attitude may have caused the House, resigned his position as the chairman of the House, Committee on Information and National Orientation. Madagascar's president said on Tuesday that the man he ousted as the country's leader was planning a coup in a bid to come back to power. Andrew Rajalonina, 
35, came to power in March when President Mark Ravalo Manana stepped aside after pressure from the opposition and army chiefs. Mr. Ravalo Manana, who fled to Southern Africa, insists he remains the legitimate leader of the Indian Ocean Island and has rejected sharing power with Mr. Rajolina. Ocean Boys began the defense of their Nigerian Cup title in less than sparkling form after being held 1-1 by First Division Julius Berger in the opening game of their round 16 group figures at Ilori. Elsewhere, newly crowned champions by Elsa United were pegged back 1-0 by Sharks at the Abel Kuta Center, where Bustor also stunned a dispirited Aqua United 3-1. It took well over an hour for the first goal to arrive in Ilori, and it went the way of the holders. Ima Enizi breaking the deadlock for Ocean Boys after 63 minutes. But last year's winners failed to build on that foundation and were made to pay a steep price when Berger found a breakthrough with just seven minutes of time left. Thank you for watching Next News. For more details on these and other stories, please visit our website www.234next.com